Hi everyone, how's it going? I am live on Instagram as well. Um, I'll just do that for a little bit because you really can't see what I'm doing here. So I'm live on three platforms right now. So um, I'll probably, Instagram, sorry, I'm probably going to um, <laughs> uh, follow the chat on um, Twitch and YouTube just so you guys know, because it's three chats to follow. <laughs> hi Ida, hi Princess. <laughs> How's it going? Everybody's waving. Hi Vicky, welcome. Hi Rachel, Ida, Nancy, Olivia. Nice to see you, happy Saturday. How are you guys doing? Are you guys um, sewing or anything? I am really excited to finish this, but you guys, I tried this on and um, <clears throat> tunic length. <laughs> That's all I got to say. <laughs> maybe when I, I tried it on over my jeans and maybe just putting it on over my jeans made it feel like um, it would be a little too short, but um, you know. So if you're on Instagram and you guys want to join our chat, I'm on YouTube and on Twitch, if you've heard of Twitch, um, and you can chat with us. There's usually a lot of viewers on YouTube, and so you can meet other sewists as well. So, um, and you can also see what I'm doing above as well as me. So it is a little, it's a little better, right guys? Right? Yeah. So, so I cut some pockets and I'm going to do them like, I did the ones for the Thea Rochelle Raglan in that design, but, so they're a cutaway pocket. So I already cut away my hand hole right there, and I made some pockets right here, and this is how they will show. So it'll be a little bit of the purple. Show, wait, 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 right there, right there. It's like, it's like camouflage, this fabric, you know? Okay, here we go. So it'll look like that. Um, and I have my collar here, <clears throat> solid purple, got to tone this baby down, right? Oh, you're sewing your Cali too, Rachel. That's awesome. You're really pleased so far. That's great. <laughs> I know, right? Plenty of time to turn to, yeah, that, exactly. <laughs> I know what you mean. I literally, when I was about to cut the little opening for this pocket here, I was like, Okay, well, there's no going back from this. And, you know, it does feel like when, um, <laughs> so many notifications for all the apps, right, Ida? I'm on all the platforms. Just trying to lure you guys onto YouTube or Twitch, um, you know, because it's just easier. You can see really well what I'm doing overhead. At least I think you guys can. <laughs> the lighting is good. You can see my machine. You can see what I'm stitching, so. I've really worked on this setup Instagram. So, um, yeah, so I, I just committed because I was like, you know what? I always like if I'm having trouble making that like plunge to do something, I will sometimes give myself a backup plan. And sometimes it has to be a really extreme backup plan because there's really not another way to, you know, like there's no other in between. So my extreme one is I would just cut and sew this dress again in the same fabric, maybe even a different colorway if I want, want the dress length, you know? So I think that, I think this will be great though. Even if this turns out to be a tunic, I'm kind of liking tunics over pants right now. So, um, and I have plenty of dresses coming out that I'm gonna finish this month. So, you know, I don't like that you can see my belly on Instagram. <laughs> okay, so um, we've got our sleeve cuffs here. I already started winding another pink bob bobbin because of course I need more pink, you guys. And then I have my collar. I got my pockets and here is my dress. So let's finish this baby up. And um, Instagram, I'll keep you here for a bit and then I'll I'll probably go over completely to YouTube and Twitch. <laughs> you just got a bunch of notifications too. <laughs> I have all of my notifications off on my phone. I'm kind of a hermit that way. Mainly because it was draining my battery at one point. So for those of you joining us new, this is what I'm making right here. The Cali shirt dress by Closet Case Patterns. Hopefully making the dress length. Um, not sure it's going to be dress length. You're cutting yours out today, Christina. That's awesome. Woohoo! I'm so glad that some of you guys are making this. I was starting to feel like I was the only one doing the sew along on this particular dress. I knew one other gal, but I know she's on vacation. So I'm trying to keep track of who's who, you know, it's, you know, I'm not, I, it's funny. I'm a hermit, but I, I promise I'm not a creeper. So <laughs> All right, what do you guys want to do first? I'm, I'm going to just do the collar first, actually, because 
I'm trying to wind some pink thread and I want to make sure I get more. I'm going to use the purple for this. So, so here we go. So I already assembled the collar. It's ready to attach. I'm at the last step of it. So what I like to do is I always like to attach the collar from the inside of the garment to the outside so that the last stitching you see is the last thing. The, the, the stitching you see is the last stitching I did. The video looks a bit fuzzy. Really? Oh, you know, it looks a little washed out to me. Is that what you mean? Kind of washed out? Or is it, um, I sharpened it up a little too much, didn't I? Let's unsharpen it a little bit and let's see if that's, oh, that will make it a little smoother. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna tone down the brightness a little bit. What do you think of that? Oops. I don't know. I don't know if that really improved it, Nancy. My internet's amazing here. So I like all the waves I get on Instagram. Hello! So just if you're joining me now, just know that um, I am streaming live on YouTube and Twitch. And um, hi, Dina, how's it going? Hi, a quilter. Yes, you're working on the Cali too and you're using the sleeve expansion pack. Um, so that's who I'm talking to mostly. I'll try and keep up with you guys, but mostly I'll probably be answering these guys because I'm already um, managing these two chats. It looks a bit washed out. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I noticed that too. Let's try and let's put it on the auto exposure, but I feel like, yeah, that's what happens. Blech. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't really like the auto exposure. <clears throat> let's turn on the brightness. Now it's kind of weird. Let's say cancel. Let's try this again. Every fabric gives us new, <laughs> new um, challenges, doesn't it? Jeans are the worst. The jeans are always the hardest. There we go. What do you think of that? I just can't, if I can blow out the pink and then it'll look a little, probably a little bit more saturated. Yeah, it's, a, it's much more muted today. It, I see what you mean though. <laughs> I'm going to use, oh, the pattern uses seven eighths. Seven eighths would be a good choice, the quilter. Yeah, hi Louise. Hi Marsha, how's it going? <laughs> um, I cut out a uh, one and three eighths because I always do, but it'll be too wide. So thanks for the reminder. It'll, seven eighths is a good one because if you are binding the hem and it's going to show on the front and the back, like double fold, then you'll want the wider width. But because it's only going to the inside of the hem, you just need the seven eighths. That's perfect. So I would stick with that because then you can do a quarter, a quarter as your seam allowances, like a quarter to attach it and a quarter to hem under. Hi, Christy, or Kelly, Kelly, KB, Kelly, right? <laughs> um, and then um, it'll be about three eighths of an inch wide, the quilter, so. All right, if the, if the color really bugs you guys, I'll change it, but I'm just gonna get going. Let's sew. All right, so uh, this is my under collar, because you can see that, um, the collars coming towards the this side of it, the underside of it. So it goes like this. This is how I know. And sometimes it's really easy to get confused when you're putting it on in this step, especially because I put it on backwards. So this is how it goes like this. So I sew from the inside of the garment to the outside. Um, a stay stitch would be really helpful. I trimmed my neckline, you guys, down to a quarter inch seam allowance because, you know, I'm kind of picky about that <laughs> and I find it a little easier to attach when I have the quarter inch I'm gonna use a little a few pins today especially on my collar because I really want it all to line up really well the collars looking really good I didn't use interfacing I used self fabric uh, I call the main fabric self so all right let's get this one on here I may re I may adjust this one And then I always put my anchoring ones down first. I put my, um, is this really the, I'm just making sure. Yeah, it would go like that. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm just doubting it because I feel like I have two layers there. All right, 
I like to put my anchoring points down first, like the centers and the ends. Oh, thanks, Marsha. <laughs> oh, thanks, you guys. Oh, thanks, you guys. You remembered. You didn't have to. <laughs> Gonna make me blush. Um, I think this is my center right here, right? Yeah. I cut off my notches. Remember, I had those kind of messy notches from when I um, cut it out because my knife went down and did too cheap on that one side. So at least I could clean that up a bit because, you know, the seam allowance is 5 8 That's a lot of wiggle room. So, okay, so I'm just putting down my ends and then I'll put in a couple of more. I'm just gonna look at it and see how it's working. So look, it looks like it's gonna fit just fine, which is awesome, right? We always like to see that. <laughs> Marcy, are you really here? Hi, Marcy. I'm streaming live on Twitch and on Insta on um, YouTube. So I am taking a leaf out of my friend who streams book, and he he does both. So I'm just I'm just gonna be on Instagram for a little bit because I'm managing already two other chats, <laughs> and that's plenty. So this side's not matching up as well, so that's good. We're just gonna do our anchor points. It's good I'm pinning it for once, and then um, we'll ease this in here. But I'll do my best to, um, you know, explain things to you guys. So what do you guys, hi Kirby, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Penny and Puggy. That's funny. I'm getting so many recommended Pug Instagram feeds right now. It's so funny. I'm kind of walking this around. I'm checking it out. This side seems a little bit more finicky. See that? I got that little bit right there. So for those of you on Instagram, people can see my, my what I'm working on right from above. Watermelon and cake. Yeah, Nancy. That's right. And I'm so, so live on YouTube and on Twitch. So you can join me there. On Twitch, um, there's, there's fewer people on there, but the so video quality can be a little better and you can zoom and clip it. But YouTube is where we are at most of the time. All right. So glad I got new pins. I really love those quilting pins for so long, but um, you know, garment pins kind of work better. Yeah, pug light. <laughs> yeah, to clip a little. Yeah, this feels like, um, this is starting to feel a little, Fussy a quilter, I totally agree with you. I noticed this the other day and I was like, you know what, it's probably fine. Sometimes that happens. And then um, it feels asymmetrical. Did it feel asymmetrical to you? Like one side matches really perfectly and this side doesn't match as well. So I may just put in a stay stitch because I never pin this much for a collar. <laughs> See, look at that. I have all this on this side. I have this little bump right here. This side's fine. So. Yeah, and clipping it would help ease it in, but I'm not gonna clip it bef before I sew it. <laughs> Are you gonna tw try Twitch today, Nancy? Nice. You don't have to. It's just near and dear to me, I guess. Um, one of you, who was over there the other day? Was it Olivia or maybe Mark, not Margaret? And you guys still had the YouTube chat open so you could see what people were saying. So there is that. Like, I have the benefit of seeing both chats at once. All right, so um, it's not going to ease in perfectly, so I'm going to ease it as I go while I'm on the machine. It'll be easier for me because when I'm sewing directly on the seam line, it helps. Um, Carol does that. That's who it is. It'll help me be more accurate. So, And I unthreaded my needle. Oh, my machine's not even on. <laughs> I said all the camera. The cameras make me nervous. Not the, um, not the uh, machine. Machine's no big deal. You just refolded and remarked. Yeah, right? That's what I just did, a quilter. Yeah, so like what she's saying is she found the same thing I did is that um, there was more to ease on one side and there was none to ease on the other. So we just moved a little bit of that to ease to the back. Doesn't really matter on a collar, collar's totally uh, symmetrical. Oh, it looks like my Instagram connection's a little bit, 
not so great. It's honestly, it's because I'm uploading so much data right now. Hi, so Nancy, how's it going? So I'll probably say goodbye to Instagram. I don't even know if they can see me, but I'll probably just end that. I don't have to worry about it. There we go. All right. There we go. I'm going to get that right in that little fold. I call that the fold, but really it's the seam line. You know. <laughs> oh, right. Here's yeah, it's you, Nancy. I forgot. I saw a little Twitch thing. You're so Nancy on Twitch and, and uh, your name on YouTube's different. I feel like I need to put a light on now. Okay. Well, so when I sew on the seam line, then it eases a little bit better. Because when you're pinning, you're kind of like all over the place, you know? Pie! Here we go. I'm going to put my pins there. Oh, that's the shoulder. I thought I had a bump. I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I may. I may get one. I'm not sure it's a fault with the pattern collar, Louise. Um, I would need to look at the pattern pieces, and I don't have them sitting here. Um, I can do that, especially if you remind me. Remind me a little bit later, and I'll get them out and check. It could just be a notching issue, honestly, you know? Because um, the neckline on um, is asymmetrical. So, because, you, you know, one placket's going over the other. Is that right in this case on a popover? Well, I'll look at it in just a second. I'll have to think about it. Like on like a Archer button up, it's um, it's symmetrical. As long as your placket is the same width on either side, and on some shirts it is not. One placket is uh, wider. Okay, this part looks a little bit like a lot to ease in. So one way you get around it is um, you know taking the seam allowance a little bigger on the shoulders, but that's you know you shouldn't have to do that, or making your collar a little bit bigger. here I'm gonna try and see where yeah I have a I have quite a bit to ease in right now like a quarter inch that's that's a lot in the collar world I'm gonna I'm actually gonna stop right there and I'm gonna look at it I'm gonna make sure I don't have any other tucks I have one right there oh no I don't it's just a wrinkle okay all this looks pretty good let's get rid of this pin here get rid of that pin. Let's see how much I have here to ease in. I mean, it's just so little. You see that? It's like that much. Can you see that? So what I could do is I could put like a easing stitch on the neckline and kind of draw it up and get it in there. I'm not sure what I want to do though. I think I kind of want to Start sewing it from this side, and then, let's see. It's a, it's an, it's a, because it's an awkward amount. It, not an awkward amount, it's an awkward spot. Because you see that this is, this curve does like kind of a right angle turn there. Hmm. I'm going to take out some of the stitching here so I can ease it across the back. The problem with um, easing is that the neck is the one that's a little bit big and there's a lot of layers there with the yoke, you know? So 
sixteenths of an inch really add up. So if I was inaccurate in cutting it and sewing it, sixteenth of an inch here, sixteenth of an inch there, could add up to that amount. So let's see here. Okay, we're gonna get that there. I wanna pull it. Then can I get it in there, you think? Whew, gonna be tough. I'm gonna start from this side. It's gonna be a little tricky to sew it from this side, but um, at least I can see the, the side that needs the easing. So let's repin my collar on this side before it starts coming out. I don't wanna catch my collar in there. Okay, the other thing I need to do is I need to back tack my collar again right here. See that? It's starting to pull away. That's just going to cause me nothing but problems later on. Okay, now I'm going to be back to pinning it. It's probably because I trimmed off my seam allowance there. So I probably trimmed off my backpack, back tack, my backpack. Alrighty, let's start. Okay, let's get all this arranged. Nice and flat out there. Can you guys see okay? Want me to like lower it a little bit? I couldn't I couldn't have it that low because of the Instagram thing. It it would have been put the camera in front of my face. Alright, so So you see, I, this is what I'm talking about. Like when you can see it kind of ballooning up right here, I want to make sure I really focus on the seam line. I'm going to really try and get this corrected by the center back there. So I want this to stay as relaxed as possible. I don't want to accidentally stretch it anymore. The only errata on the CC website is for the printed pattern popover place piece, <laughs> which has notches that shouldn't be there. Is that on the side seam by any chance, those notches? Because there have been a couple I've been kind of like, huh. Yeah, it's probably fine, the pattern. Okay, so I'm kind of pulling the stand, but leaving the top as nice and relaxed as possible. But it's still going to be kind of a tricky fit. I'm just gonna do a little bit here and there, focus on my seam line. And remember, I trimmed 3 eighths of an inch off of all these edges so that I could have a quarter inch seam allowance. Thank goodness, because doing this on 5 eighths would be really hard for me. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna make it. I'm gonna have to back up a tiny bit more, but it's gonna happen. Back up meaning I am, I might, I'm gonna have to uh, seam rip a little bit. Oof, maybe, maybe not. Dang, that is just so much. shoulder I'm not gonna make it let's pull out a little bit more I don't want the collar to be too big either because then it'll go flop open mm -hmm. oh it's on the placket piece huh I don't think I did any of the notches on the placket piece I just ironed it and then had to adjust my ironing <laughs> I, you know, you guys, I did make my placket smaller, which would make my neckline bigger, but I did that so that my placket would line up. Oof, I'm gonna make it. I'm barely gonna make it. Let's see, I hope I didn't get a tuck that I don't know about. Not tucks, just like easing, extreme easing. <laughs> Let's see what this side looks like. Let's see what this looks like. 
Looks like tux to me. This fabric wrinkles so easily. This looks like a tuck right here. That's my only one. Not bad. Oh, okay. I, I have the PDF, that's right. <laughs> I forgot. Because it's, because I had it printed out, I was like, oh, I have the print version. <laughs> I'm just getting rid of that tuck right there. And then I'm gonna iron the heck out of it. <laughs> Cause iron's my best friend now, right? Oakley doakley. All right, so let's um, clip the neckline and then we're gonna iron the heck out of it. I can't believe I'm wearing a sweater today, you guys. I was gonna wear my new Amelia dress for you guys, but it just got so rainy and cold here. And um, I, all week long, I've been still wearing dresses, except a couple of times where I wear jeans, but then I wore like strappy shoes. And I, like, you know, like everyone has like their pet peeve when they're cold, like their hands or their neck or whatever. Mine is my ankles. I hate my like ankles being cold and I can't even tell. And then I get home and I put on like house pants, you know, and socks and I think, oh my gosh, my legs have been so cold all day. Yeah, I think Louise, I think that would have been a good idea to put an ease stitch on there. And I said something like about that at the beginning that I should have. I went for it. The thing is like an ease, actually I take that back. What I wanted was a stay stitch, not an easing stitch. And an easing stitch would be something that you would draw, you know, like on a, um, what is that? Um, like what you would do on a sleeve cap, you would uh, pull your bobbin threads and then um, it would ease the cap together. But, um, what really a stay stitch would have been to help stabilize the neckline and it wasn't like going it wasn't like going crazy like relaxing getting stretched so I, that's why I didn't worry about it the fabric is pretty pretty tightly woven pretty stable you finally have sun there that's nice you love that I'm ironing now I'm glad <laughs> it was stressing everyone else out <laughs> I wasn't ironing I know <laughs> more when I didn't when I wasn't streaming it's just having the camera on there helps you're in Wisconsin it's freezing yeah I did knit this one it's one of my first sweaters <laughs> I love it this is made from Brooks yarn you know sincere sheep okay so this looks pretty good and this is the inside neck <coughs> so the thing is um easing it because it's 81 there. Yeah, it's usually 81 here too, Olivia. <coughs> Excuse me. I keep getting tickles. Hi, Lisa. You're in Wisconsin too? Is it freezing where you are too? Like, this, the whole state's pretty much like weather is about the same. Or is there like little microclimates? I mean, I'm sure there's microclimates, but I know. You know, is there like some crazy banana belt in Wisconsin? <laughs> you know, like there is in Colorado. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's switch to the iron. Got my uh, sleeve ham here. Something like this. Oh, it's cold. What the heck? Oh, it's out. Okay, we'll wait for it to warm up a little bit. 
Let's see how this is going to start looking. You know. Making sure there's no tucks there. They suspiciously look like tucks. You just finished a Cali shirt dress last weekend, Lisa? What tips do you have for me? Did you have trouble putting the collar on? I just had to ease a tiny bit. It went on though. Like I've definitely had collars that were harder than that, you know? That literally could have just been my own thing. My, my iron's almost there. And how, did you make a dress, Lisa? Or, cause mine look, is looking a little short for a dress. It's 48 there. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, Marsha, exactly. I think it's about 68 here, which doesn't, I know that's not cold for most of you, but um, it was 80 before that, and we are kind of, you know, we do run a little warmer in the middle and lower part of the state. I don't think I've ironed a collar right here in a really long time. It's really awkward. At least I have long hair, right? This makes it so I can never cut my hair. Why is this not? Yeah, it is. Okay, it's getting hotter. Okay. It's not very hot. The iron, that is. All right, let's pin it. Oops. There we go. <laughs> the inside of that. Hmm. So the way I do mine, Lisa, is I started... From the inside of the garment, here's my inside, and then I go to the outside. Um, so hopefully mine doesn't end up being sloppy because it's on the outside. <laughs> oh, you, yeah. Oh, Carol, your stitcherly love. That's such a cute you, Twitch name. All right, let's um, start with my anchor points. You guys don't, you really don't have to go to Twitch, but it's just like, it's made for this. It's made for the streaming. Alrighty, let's see here. I'm still discovering some of you on Instagram. Like I try and follow you guys and then I, but I don't know your Instagram's names sometimes. And then I'm like, oh, that's so-and-so. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna do that in just a second because I'm gonna pick it up. But I'm liking how nice and flat this is and how good it's going. Because the collar was a little bigger um, this may end up not being too hard to, um, oh, it was the neckline that was bigger. Oh, this shouldn't be too hard at all now. That's right. It was the neckline that was bigger. You haven't posted yours yet, Lisa? I, yeah, we want to see if you want to share. <laughs> if you did it part as part of our sew along, you can tag it um, S S L S A L, meaning so so live sew along, and then we can um, we can see it. Oh, you know why, Marcia? Because when you join a chat. You're not going to see all the messages posted there before you got there. I think YouTube's exactly the same way, but you've probably never left YouTube and come back. So that's why it looks like there's nobody there. Um, 
and you can you can zoom so you can just pinch and zoom which is nice like I said you guys don't you really don't have to do it let's get rid of this thread right here this is looking really good to me like it's I know it's not done but the fact that it's just like doing it it's good you know I, what I find funny in the makers and crafting category on Twitch is um, the number of people doing, um, do you guys know those those little like, they're like little plastic beads. They look like a little um, a cylinder with a hole down the middle. It's not like a bead you would use for jewelry. They're little plastic beads. And then people arrange them by color and glue them together and it forms a picture. Am I describing that well? They're called something. I, I don't know what they're called. Um, your sheepies on Instagram. Okay, cool. We'll, we'll watch for it. <laughs> now, <Nah>, Marsha. <laughs> You're fine here on YouTube. I don't think I'll ever leave it. Um, I see those a lot in the makers and crafting category on Twitch, which is kind of funny. Maybe those that that's gamers doing something fun and crafty. All right, so I'm gonna start um, at the center back. So my back tack is here and not at the neck. I'm, I'm kind of enjoying pinning, so I'm just pinning a lot. Yeah, right, Louise? Yeah, those melty things. Yeah, you have to melt them, right? That's how, they're not glued, they're like melted together. Yeah. I see those a lot. Like today I was like, wow, there's 550 people um oh is it called hama that doesn't sound familiar at all to me um yeah so like today i was like wow there's 550 people like streaming in the makers and crafting community let me see and one of them it was her birthday today and i was like oh cool and she's doing a 12-hour stream i was like well cool maybe we can raid her with our one or two viewers you know and um and then i noticed her stream i thought it was sewing it looked like sewing because she said costuming but she was making jewelry it was really cool like i think she was creating the pieces that and then linking them together like big chunky things like maybe she made them out of clay i don't know and then, um, but it was in German. It said German and English, but it was mostly German. So I was like, oh, well, I could try and rate her, but um, all of you guys might be like, I, I don't know about this. This isn't sewing, and it's not in English, because most of you are English speaking. And even the ones that aren't, uh, their English isn't their first language, they still speak English, which is very nice of you guys. Thank you. Yeah, I don't know what they're called. Maybe they're just called melty beads. <laughs> Maybe that's what people call them here, but they're actually called hammer. Like I saw someone doing like R2D2, you know? And I've seen a father and son doing it together, which was kind of cute. Is that a thread or my hair thread? I need my all. I need my all because I kind of need more light. I may need to turn on my light, you guys. Okay, so what I have found is sometimes it's better to pin your collar so that it's a little tight, like in other words, pinning it a little short so that it does that because by the time your machine gets here, it evens out. I didn't really think about doing that because my collar is pretty tight on here already, but it is a nice little tip. If your machine's anything like mine, it kind of pushes the fabric towards the, the end result. And I don't like it to push it past, you know? Pulling it through the machine head here.
So this is the spot I was telling you guys that sometimes you can finish your collar. Their last seam is right here. And then it folds over it so it doesn't really matter, you know. You have a choice between all chat or top chat. Oh, I mean live chat or top chat. Hmm. I don't really know what the top chat is. Do you not see the chat at all? <clears throat> because that is, um, it looks like, it looks like, and now you can hear me. Let's see. I need to mute myself. Okay. So it looks like it's a little tiny, hard to miss arrow up at the top right corner above the video feed. And there's a little tiny gray arrow. I don't know why they make this so hard to see. And then you press that and then it'll like open up the chat window or collapse the chat window. It's kind of my pet peeve of Twitch. All the updates they do, they're constantly trying to improve it and they don't fix that. It's even worse on your phone. <laughs> Actually, it's a little easier on your phone. It's worse on the desktop. I might have that wrong. I feel like I needed light for that. I hope that turned out okay. We'll see. <laughs> it's one good thing about the... Um, Collar being a little bit um, like tight on the neckline is this final step is really easy. <laughs> There's the upshot. Oh, I almost cut my dress. Oh my gosh. This fabric likes to creep into my scissors. This little spot right here. Oh, that's probably okay. That looks pretty good. Cover up those little puckers there. It's okay. Oh, this is my start stop. Okay. Hi, Christy. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I do that too. All of a sudden, I'll, I'll hear Shadon talking to me. He's like, Sarah, me have you? I'm like, oh, shoot. And I'm running across my studio to like respond to him. Or the worst is when I ask someone a question on stream, on the, in their stream, and then it takes them like three minutes to see my um, question, and then they reply to me, and my daughter calls, and she's FaceTiming me, and I can't, I can't, didn't hear the response. Cool. That looks pretty good. It's not off center. I just have it like folded there. So look at these buttons I have in my stash. I have um, these. They're kind of um, over the top. I ran and got these. I was like, oh, these are big. I've been wanting to see, use these for forever, but they're just too small. But they're these little French um, antique buttons I used to have on something else. They're just a little too small. This seems a little too cartoonish, though. I wonder if I could make these work. Sidetrack. Let's see. I only have five. Oh. There, I don't think I have enough. Those are just too small. Bummer. So special. Can I get these on here? I like organized all my buttons when I moved. It felt really good. 
they had grown to a, a bigger amount than I thought, you know, and then I had added all these tack buttons and denim making things and rivets. So I put them in my old label organizing and then, then it became my hang, my um, zipper pull thing. Um, so I'm just gonna, I put things away. It's chronic. Okay. Um, let's do pockets and then we can do our sleeve cuffs. And change thread. That's when you'd like to zoom in exactly. I know it's so funny that YouTube can't do that. I wonder why. I wonder if that's like some sort of crazy, um, you know, ninja technology. <laughs> I don't know. Oh yeah, I lost the, I don't have the card anymore for all my buttons, you know? And um, I wanted them, I, I they were, you know, it's like they're more bulky with the cards. So sometimes I'll, I'll like save the, the button maker if they're handmade, because uh, I've gotten some really nice handmade button. Oh man. Um, do I use fabric cover buttons? You know, Vicki, it's been a really long time since I've used covered buttons, but they are kind of an underappreciated button. Sorry, I have to thread, actually thread my machine. The nerve. And that's so loopy from the spool, I can't get it to go through the little thingy. So on an industrial machine, there's not many like hooks. <laughs> they're, they're all holes. You have to like thread all of the holes. But you could pull your thread through like you do on a serger. And that's what I usually do. It doesn't take me long. It's just, you know, a little more awkward because you guys are staring at me. <laughs> yeah, you can zoom in on Twitch. It's not like um, it makes it super detailed, but it does help. And I can bring my camera down lower, you guys. Just say the word. All right, I feel like I'm, I'm flossing its teeth, you know? Keeping it nice and healthy. At least this uh, smaller thread is a little easier to thread the needle with, but it curls because the spool's so small. Okay, I take it back. I should not have said it's easier. You just pinch zoom, like, like you do on a phone. If you're, like my desktop computer lets me do that and so does my um, phone. My iPad, all of it. Oh my God, you guys, I'm really sorry. Oh, do you wanna see them closer? There, these are the buttons. Is that even in focus? I have the autofocus off because <laughs> otherwise it gets a little spastic. All right, well, I think to myself was threading the needle. <laughs> you guys like that better? Carol's asking Marsha if she's still there on uh, Twitch. <laughs> so cute. Are you still here? So you know what you, how you tell Stitcher Lily Love is um, if you press the at symbol in there, like type at and then start typing their name, it'll come up with the people resembling their name that are in the chat. If there's probably only a couple people in the chat to begin with, so they'll probably all come up. I don't think in YouTube it shows you that kind of thing. All right, let's put these pockets on. Alrighty. Hi Aramis, how's it going? 
finishing our dress today. We have a lot of steps to do to finish it, but we are finishing it. I'm going to do a cutaway pocket. So this is the opening. How are you guys doing? <laughs> I like that you guys are trying to figure out Twitch together. That's good. Yeah, do all the experiments you want. You know? The colors on Twitch are brighter. Brooke says the quality is better. I'm going to press that before I stitch it next. So Louise, my funny story about um, ironing, because I, I don't know if you follow me on Instagram, but, um, oh, you can use a tab key to complete, oh, right, 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 like as it starts to type the name, then you press tab, yeah, exactly. Um, when I was learning how to sew, um, I was, I really didn't want to learn how to sew. It, I, I mean, I, I, I was, you know, like 14, you guys, so just forgive how, you know, terrible I was, I was a teenager. Um, and I was like, I don't want to sew, that's for girls, you know? So, oh, you can't tell the difference in quality. Yeah, then don't worry about it. Just go back to YouTube. And so I learned it in home ec in high school. It was the only, um, only <laughs> elective available at that time because I had to take, other, I wanted other classes for sure. Um, and I didn't want to take auto shop. I just wasn't interested in it. That was like my only other option. <laughs> you can't see your, your my top, bottom, upside down, or back to front bit of yolks and start shaking. <laughs> well, remember that the uh, body has a big old fat pleat in it too. That might help. Um, and so I was taught by this, you know, I had a home ec teacher and I switched to my iron. And she said, you know, like, she didn't, my mom didn't teach me to sew, the home ec teacher did. And so then I was sewing with my mom and she was like, my favorite tool is the iron when I'm sewing. I, I gave my mom an old lady voice, but my mom's not an old lady. She's still not an old lady. She's really young. She's like only 68. <laughs> so um, she was like, my favorite tool is the iron when I'm sewing. And I was, and I was just like, thought we were like sharing our favorite things. And I was like, oh yeah, mine's the seam primer. And she just kind of had that look, the you know, like the emoji has with the straight mouth. You know, she was just like, Ugh, like not the point. Like she didn't say anything, but she was kind of like, oh brother. <laughs> so there you go, Louise. Oh shoot, my iron is still. I keep turning it off. So it de that definitely stuck with me, and I started realizing, oh wait, she's trying to make a point. You know. The zoom is nice, you like that? Yeah. <laughs> My mom was young when she had me, Marcia. We're only 20 years apart. And you know, she was a single mom when she raised me. I have a brother and sister, but from a different dad. And so um, they were born when I was about 12 and um, like when, as I got older, my mom and I more looked like sisters. My mom didn't get gray hair. Like she still barely has any gray hair. And I turned gray in my thirties, thanks to my dad. Like he did in his twenties, my real father. Ooh, look at all that. I live in a very, very, very high mineral um, content water system. There, there's proof of it. Like a lot of people get that, but it's really bad here. Um, so a lot of people thought that my mom and I were, were sisters. And then it didn't help that she had, um, <laughs> Christy. Yeah, right? Um, it, 
Then my mom had my little sister when I was like 12 and a half. Wait. Yeah, 12 and a half. And then my brother when I was like 14. She had them really close together. And um, she, uh, like I would be standing in line with her at the grocery store, right? Holding my sister. And my mom would be holding my brother. They were babies, basically, toddlers. And people would think that that was, that he... That, oh, I would be holding my brother and my mom would be holding my sister. That's what it was, I think. And people thought we were sisters shopping with our babies. I was like 15 years old or 16, you know? And my mom is shorter than me. She's really petite, so I'm taller than her. Like, at this point, we're almost looking the same age. Like, I'm a giant compared to my mom. And one time, like, when she worked at an elementary school, like, I had been moved. I moved out. I was, like, gone, you know? I was like onto other stuff. I, um, my mom said, you know, I have this woman at work that doesn't believe me that I have a daughter that's your age. And it's getting really annoying. Like the woman's being really rude about it. <laughs> and so she made me visit her at work one day. <laughs> so I am um, not surging. I'm finishing all my seams with French seams. So that's how I'm gonna do this pocket. I'm gonna do a really narrow seam allowance. I, I, this fabric is so thin that I'm, I'm kind of like, you know, I'm gonna stitch this pocket down to the front. And um, I want it to be as thin as possible. So I'm gonna do a really tiny seam there. My, my, this is how short my dress is, is that I had to <laughs> cut the pocket to match the shape of the hem. <laughs> Your first at 19, second at 20. Yeah, yeah, that's about my mom. That's about what she did. Like I was my mom's age, when I had my daughter, I was my mom's age when she had my sister. Like, like I was the same age she was when she had had my sister. Okay, so there's my pocket. I'm gonna iron that as well. And then I'm gonna stitch it down through, through the garment. I tried to get the top pocket with as much pink on it as possible since that is against the pink side. And also I wanted it as a barrier to having this one being the purple, but I did want the purple to peek out of the pocket window right there. So that was my rationale right there. Yeah, and people now, they're just like, what, your, your mother and daughter? I mean, the fact that my mom's hair isn't gray, you know, it's kind of funny. So let's see, I'm confusing myself, let's see. This one goes like this, so yeah, I need to sew this wrong sides together. And then my mom kind of conveniently like, com conveniently like forgot how to sew once I got pretty proficient in it. And then later on she got back into it. She had this really fantastic Bernina when I was growing up and it's kind of why I've always had a Bernina home machine when I can buy it myself. But the best part about a Bernina, what is, what's wrong here? Nothing's wrong. Uh, the best part of Bernina is that the seam ripper that they give you with the machine. That thing is the best seam ripper ever. It is so flippin' sharp and lasts so long. All right, let's iron these. Oh, you have a 19 year difference between you and your sister. Yeah, so my sister and I are like 12 and a half years apart, but then she and I got married the same year, and then she had her kids younger than me. So she's bridging our age gap. It's kind of cool. Like our kids are only about six years apart. So she halved the age gap between us.
It's kind of fun because then we can be moms together, you know? Whew, I need to, I need to fix my iron. So yeah, I live in California near the Sierra Nevadas. And when I, where I used to live in Humboldt County was on the coast, about an hour south of Oregon. And then when I moved here, I was really shocked at the mineral content in the water here. It's kind of fascinating. But there's a lot of volcanic um, activity, not activity, but there's a lot of, of, it's a volcanic mountain range. My thumb, I burned my thumb. You can't even see it, but I have no, I can't tack, I can't grab that. I don't have any fingerprint on it. I feel like I'm always telling you guys about some crazy, stupid thing I did to myself. My pinky toe's feeling a lot better, at least. <laughs> my mom didn't teach me how to sew. I home did. But she gave me, definitely gave me lots of really great tips and stuff. Um, but I think, like, she's like me. Like, when my daughter became interested in sewing, I didn't, um, I didn't teach her. Yeah, the stitch quality on the Bernina is really good. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, she definitely has given me lots of great tips and stuff. And she would make me things when I was, you know, young, like, you know, I would be, because it was cheaper than if you're schooling and you need something and it's like, we're having a square dance and your daughter needs a square dance skirt. And um, she would make me one. She'd stay up all night and do it. Like, I, it's so funny because I remember when she did that and I didn't even know I needed the skirt. Maybe I didn't. And she just wanted me to have it. But I was super excited that it, when I spun, it went straight up on the sides. <laughs> And she told me, and I actually, um, like, she told me how she did it. And at the time, I was nine years old, right? Nine or ten. And I was like, huh, okay. Didn't sew then, by the way. I didn't sew until I was uh, in high school. But she said, oh, you know what I did was I took our um, dining room table and I laid the fabric on it, and it's a circle, and she cut the whole skirt from the circle of the dining room table. You know, the thing is, like, that'll only work when your kid is a certain height and age. So then she cut a circle out of the middle of it, and then she put a waistband on it, you know, and it was all good. But, you know, <laughs> that wouldn't work on, like, a teenager. That would be way too short. So our, our table was the right diameter for a um, square dance skirt for a nine-year-old. I didn't really get that very well, did I? Good thing it's just a pocket. All right, so I'm just pinning this down. Here's my pocket. This is not included in the pattern, you guys. I used the um, Thea Rochelle Raglan Bio Dossier as kind of my guide because it existed already. I made my own pattern, but I kind of looked at her height of the pocket and stuff, and I tried it on. So. All right, I'm just gonna stitch this down. I'm gonna stitch it from the top side, so I can so my stitches look the nicest. Oh, my thread came out of the needle. It's just too lightweight for my machine. First try. <laughs> I don't want to get any torquing. I want it to be as invisible as possible, if that's possible, right? Because I, I, I kind of did an in-your-face pocket, you know? I kind of figured this would be a really good silhouette for that pocket, for this pocket. It looks like I'm just sewing blind, you guys, huh? I can see it, though. Ooh. Ooh, starting to curve. There we go. Oh. 
Oh, come on. Okay, so you see that? I didn't iron that very good right there. Oh, look, I can actually get it though. Okay, good. I was about to show you a little trick, <laughs> but I don't need to now. You wouldn't have thought very good of me. <laughs> That's cute. What do you guys think? It's still the, the camera looks really fuzzy to me still, huh? Mm -hmm. Alrighty, um, go. I have the camera so close, I'm not sure you can really see what I'm doing. All right, so here's my other pocket. Not a lot of space to work here. Alrighty, nice and flat. We agree. Look, I got that one okay. So now we know it was my sewing. Oh, no wonder. She was looking for you, Marsha. <laughs> She's like, are you still here? <laughs> she had to restart her computer. <laughs> Look, I got that lined up right there, but not that right there. Okay, let's look at that, though. I literally lost all tactile function on my thumb because I burned it. Shiny. All right. Oh, wait, I need to do my perimeter. Do, 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 do. <laughs> so usually you guys, this is actually, okay. This is actually kind of cool to note. Um, no matter how busy I was on my birthday every year for years, for years, I just remember, um, you know, I've always been in the garment industry or sewing industry somehow, always. I've just always been there. Even when I worked on a farm, I was still doing stuff on the side. <laughs> and, um, <clears throat> but when I had my last two businesses, um, I just found myself, you know, people always ask me, do you make your own clothes? And I'd be like, I don't have the, um, I don't have, I don't have the time and it's a lot of money and blah, 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 right? And you know, there are some ready to wear stuff I wanted to buy and have, you know, so. But every year on my birthday, no matter how busy I was, no matter how crazy it was, in some years, let me tell you, it seemed crazy that I would do this. I would sew all day for myself. Just drop everything no matter what. And it became a thing like people, <clears throat> even friends that knew me knew that. They're like, oh, are you sewing today? You know, what'd you make? It was so weird that people were kind of interested, you know. And last year, I think, was the first year I didn't. And it was because... I, I don't remember why, actually. I can't remember why. But this is the first year that I am sewing for myself, and it's it's kind of my job. <laughs> and it's really nice to have you guys here. So that's kind of cool. It's like, you know, your birthday is like the one day where you can tell people, oh, I'm doing this. And they're like, okay. Because they're going to let you do whatever the heck you want, right? Like your kids and your husband or your partner or whatever. They're not going to say, well, that's dumb <laughs> on your birthday, right? So I think that's why I started doing it that way. Not that my partner or kid would ever say something like that, but it just made it me, it, it was easier to give myself permission to be all out centered on myself that day. And I'm pretty good about taking care of myself. There was a time definitely where I could have been better about it, but now I'm pretty good about it. It's just not lining up right there, but what can you do? So um, it's kind of cool that this is my thing now. All right, I'm just gonna trim off a little bit right here. And right here, smooth out my seam, my uh, side seam. 
I feel like I just made it worse. What do you think? <laughs> it's still poking out. I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to be a French seam, so it'll be fine. <laughs> That's awesome, Nancy. So what you're saying is I shouldn't wait till that long. <laughs> I have to say, like, I, I was, I've always been into the idea of making the chicken boots patterns into home sew patterns. Like, I was, I was always fine with that. I had to, like, get my head space right for it because, um, you know, having the time to do it. So I had to wait until everything was kind of done with chicken boots. And um, then I started it, and I was like, oh, my God, I have to learn a few programs. And then I've made such great headway this week on it, and I'm, I'm, really into it I'm having a really good time with it because it's back to the like doing pattern drafting which I really love so that's kind of cool I just love the engineering side of sewing I like the three-dimensional thing I like all the measurements I like the writing the directions out like doing battling it all with a gra like a graphics program not my favorite thing but at the same time, when I have successes, it kind of keeps me going, you know? All right, I'm going to do my side seams now because I'm going to do my sleeve cuffs. And I'm going to do the right, wrong sides together first because we're going to do French seams. I like the pockets. <laughs> They're cute. I shortened my back hem an inch and a quarter. I know the, the drama of the Cali shirt is part of its charm, um, but I felt like it wasn't, it wasn't the right length for me. And I may need to adjust that more, but I'm gonna hem it today and go for it. I can always, I can always shorten it later. So I'm gonna start with a, a quarter inch seam. Getting all these little thready threads out of there. And evening up my uh, seam allowance there. I'm gonna trim a little bit of this off right here because, um, because my next pass, I don't want it to show. And it was, I was evening it up. All those little threads will show if I don't get rid of them. And then I need to immediately sew it before they come back. I know I'm making my cutting look really awkward, sorry. Like when you guys cut, you're like right over it looking down and I'm having to do it like out in front of me. Oh, I know that Mother's Day tradition really came about in such an organic way. It's been really nice. Gosh darn it, I unthreaded my needle again. It's going to make me ragey. Just because it's so flipping hard. It's such lightweight thread. Yeah, I'm going to stick it, stick with pink though. Who knew I'd have to switch thread colors so much on this? Oh wow, Marsha, that's quite, that's quite a, a lot. <laughs> and now every day is Saturday. <laughs> yeah, right, Lisa? That's exactly what I was thinking. That's awesome, you're gonna do a bunch of them. Yeah, I felt like um, it, the, the back was so swoopy that it makes me look hunchback, you know? That, and I think like, I think it's a kind of a look, you know? So, you know, I, I respect that. It's just not for me, I guess. All right, so let's do this other, other one. Quarter inch seam. After our sightseeing, we only have the cuffs and the hem to go. 
I'm really hoping that the bias I cut is enough and the right color for the hem. Yeah, that is a great endorsement. I do feel like this is one of those patterns I would want to refine as well. Like I would want to get it right for me. The side seam matches so perfectly. I'm kind of surprised because I've monkeyed around with it so much, you know? And I, and I definitely didn't do as well on the collar. It was so funny when I was recording my video for the project bag instructions, it was weird not having you guys there. <laughs> Don't unthread the needle. All right, I'm gonna switch to my iron real quick. tea house fabric already shipped and it's gonna be here it says it's gonna be here on monday that is crazy fast i feel like emailing him and just saying guess what my fabric is getting here so fast i thought you guys would like to know that because it's coming from canada and it is just a dice roll with uh, shipping times from canada for all of us it's like some days you'll get it like Three days later, and other times it'll take three weeks. So weird and random. And, I, and I'm talking about coming from the same region for those weird shipping times. Like, I could ship to the UK faster than Canada. <laughs> All right, so I just press the seam one direction when I do the, the French seam. So that way, when I go to press the seam um, on the edge, it's a little easier. Hope it, I can't quite see it. I'm hoping it's right there on the edge. It kind of looks cool on the inside, doesn't it? Except for all the calcium. I think I would use a different fabric for my next one. Like this fabric is great for this. Uh, but I think it would be a completely different look and feel with a different weight fabric and I'm kind of eager to see that like in a linen I saw this actually you guys I have this this exact same pattern bookmarked on Instagram that someone made in a Brussels linen and I was like yeah that's what I want you know and I'm making my Upton dress in a Brussels linen I have no idea what that means, like being a Brussels linen, <laughs> but. <laughs> oh yeah, Marsha, gosh. So it's a denim tencel and Liberty Lawn. Yeah, Liberty, absolutely. You're gonna size down next time. So that's good to know. Oh, I love Calico. <laughs> yeah, so smart. Muslins are great. All right, so now I'm going to sew it at 3 8 When you iron, it just sews itself.
<laughs> oh. They did inseam pockets? I, I looked for that. Yeah, I you know, a quilter knits, a, a Brooke turned me onto it, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I actually have something bookmarked in it. She says hers doesn't wrinkle as much. I have some right here. This is what I'm doing my Upton dress in. And it just it just looks like linen. I mean, like on this camera, oh, we're gonna have some troubles with this one, aren't we? And this is my lining, <laughs> this is my lining fabric. But um, this isn't ironed yet though, so it did wash really well. And there's a huge um, color, huge color selection for that. I got that from uh, Stone Mountain and Daughter, but a lot of places have it. Yeah, just Brussels lemon, linen, lemon. <laughs> All right, let's put our sleeve cuffs on. So our last pattern pieces. Five-eighths, right? Let's check. <laughs> Let's see here. And the uh, angle goes to the top, right? It looks like they hem theirs first. Okay, well, it doesn't really say, so it must be five-eighths. Oh, wait a minute. I have it wrong side to right side. Well, that's pretty hard to tell. Whoops. <laughs> oh, it's a blend, is that why? I, um, I have to admit, I was a little like fabric fatigued shopping at the moment and I I kind of decided I either wanted like a, a really good Kelly green or a red I like I wanted a red dress and um the green I couldn't tell if it was a good Kelly green so I went with the red um so yeah all right so this is the right side that's the wrong side the right side the wrong side okay there we go it's subtle and it's very shadowy under my machine head for me. I don't think it's as shadowy for you guys. Here we go. Oops, that's kind of more like half inch. Clip that. Have one. Oh, the angle part. I know. And you know, um, I was all cocky when I cut this out and I was like, oh, I'm not going to do the notches. The reason I don't do notches, you guys, I want you to understand, like, I'm not doing it because I think I'm, like, so good. I, I totally respect notches as a pattern drafter. The reason I don't do them a lot of times is because I have more flexibility with the fabric piece if it doesn't have the notches. If I want to make a change um, and I accidentally notch too deep or something, that's all. And sometimes they um, will, it's drink, <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> Um, and sometimes um, they'll confuse me because they're not how maybe I would notch it or something. So, <laughs> I know I need to fix the command. Should it be seam ripper? <laughs> I'll put seam ripper. How about I just put rip? <laughs> what do you guys want? All 
Oh, that's good to know, Christy. All right, so Lisa, the angle goes to the top then, right? Yeah, the only reason I was gonna assume that was because they line it up right here like that, and I was like, they better not show that flipped if it's supposed to go down here. But see, look at that looks straight and that looks straight. And so I was like, all right, angle, angle. Not the best way to determine it, but that's what I was gonna do. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna start from the inside of the garment and then go to the outside like I always do. And I'm really tempted to trim all this, but I'm gonna wait until I, so I'm not going to probably. Okay, so is it the, the front is the shorter one, right? It better be. That makes more sense, don't worry. Okay, wait, I'm confusing myself here. Okay, right here, like this. Oh, that's good to know. The closet case has good instruction, better than the, Better than me? No. <laughs> you mean better than the instructions of the printed ones? I didn't see that. I saw there, uh, someone sent me a, one of you guys told me that they, um, they had a blog post about some, like, uh, hacks. Hacks for the Cali. And I looked at it, but I couldn't really see the hacks. Because I was like, oh, good, sightseeing pockets. But I didn't really see the hack, so I was like, eh, I'll just figure it out. All right. I think I will open up this underarm seam. Not a real armhole, so it is a little bit tight right here. I put the notch on the <laughs> on the the back of the garment. Like that's the only notch I really didn't need. I needed it on the cuff. <laughs> At least I'm just teasing. <laughs> that's awesome, Marsha. Your linen sounds great. Which one's that gonna be for? What's your linen for? All right, so we have this cuff, and um, I'll probably iron that. In the old days, I wouldn't have. Here we go, looking cute. So, all right, you guys, um, is Upton or Myrna next? <laughs> Nancy. <laughs> That's so smart. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> you guys are so clever. I always sew from the inside of the armhole. So if I just put that in there and get started, it should, it'll all it'll all come together, you know? So I'm gonna line up my seam. I push my seam allowance to the back. All right, now I'm ready to go. I think I'm gonna run out of bobbin soon though, so I gotta be careful. I better check it. I don't wanna run out on the Finishing the cuff, you know, like when you turn it under. <laughs> Don't be afraid, Marcia. You can, you can do it. It sounds like you have a lot of it. 
Have you washed it? That might help feel more comfortable with it. Oh yeah, did you buy different colors? Or did you just buy yards and yards of one? Washed up beautifully. Good. There you go. For it. It's more like a sleeve salami than a ham. Cool. It's crazy all this, uh, these minerals I'm getting today. None before. Wow, it's on a bolt. You did buy a lot. I kind of put, I pushed this back, like past the seam about five eighths. And then I put this one at the fold right there. And then I just let it correct itself like this. That's how I get it. Path of least resistance, you know? I can really drive myself crazy trying to line up sleeve cups and stuff, you know? So I try to not. <laughs> the linen in the 100 axis sewing would be really good. Same with this pattern, I think. Um, let's see. 
So this is the right side of my garment. This is the wrong side, like the inside, you know what I mean? So I think I'm kind of tempted to just uh, wing it since I ironed it. <laughs> Start in the underarm. It's a small armhole. Because this is nice and flat. I know that this is non negotiable and this is non negotiable. I can just fold to that line and I'm good, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't check my bobbin. You know what that means. I'm making sure it doesn't torque. That's why I'm holding it right here too. Let's get rid of this and this. There we go. This looks like the trouble spot. Tell this spot right here is the trouble spot for me. I have to ease it in. I think it's my underarm, right? But I don't want the torquing to start happening. Try harding right now. <laughs> oh, you know who's doing a, a hundred acts of sewing along is, um, did I say that right? Um, beyond, uh, beyond measure is that British, uh, sewing supply place. I really like like I met her at a show. She's the sweetest. She has some really interesting things. Um, she's doing a little sew along, I think in July. I think her Instagram is beyond measure. He was just started obsessing over um, linen. Yeah, I like it. I, I like it and I don't like it, you know, because of the wrinkle thing. But I like the way it drapes. I'm getting, and you know, like I, I'm not that like strict about wrinkles either. Like I'm pretty relaxed about it, but at the same time, you know, there's certain things like when it's at the hem and you just can't get the hem to lay flat. That drives me nuts, you know. I have good eyes for measuring. I, you must be talking to someone else. <laughs> My philosophy is measure three times and then measure four more times. Maybe you consider cutting then. <laughs> That was always Ray Ann and I's thing. It was really more counting. We would count it six times and we doubt the count because we were always shocked at how often our count wouldn't be correct. A simple thing of counting. Now I just, I like when I have to count a lot of something, I count in groups. So that way I'm only having to count 10 or 25 and then I'm like, okay, that's 25, 25, 25, that's 100, <laughs> you know? Because we used to have to count hundreds of things. This is the top, so I'm going to start at the underarm. Got my dress all twisted. What's this? Oh, it's just my back stitch. Okay. That's true. Thrifted's great. Well, it might not be even, Carol, but it is to my eye. You know what I mean? So 
probably will be to anyone who looks at it. And like I said, I ironed this. You can see it's a little narrower here than right here. I ironed this. This is actually not right. Um, and so that's kind of helping. I was a little better about ironing the other side too. This one, not so much. So I pushed, I pulled this edge, this cut edge, five eighths past the sewing line. That way I know. And then I ironed it, but I, I didn't iron this one as accurately, very obviously, right? I'll fix that right now. This fabric's nice and like, it wants to do what I'm telling it to do because it's a tight enough weave, not like linen. Linen, I'd have to pin the crap out of this. <laughs> linen likes to do what it wants to do. It's a little bit of an open weave and that's why it's so wonderful to wear, but it does have that kind of drawback where it can get a little bit, um, it, gr it can grow. So if you guys do cut out something in linen, I recommend sewing it pretty soon after you cut it out. Otherwise it might just kind of get a little relaxed. You may end up with a different size or some seam, uh, tough to match seams. It wants to give me a tuck right there. Fine, be that way. Not bad. Okay, and that time. <laughs> You big time that we're scared. You went from bleached drop cloths. Why do you have to soak them for hours and it's stinky and a mess? <laughs> yeah, linen, it, you mean like that it can, um, that's smart, a quilter. Yeah, like she says, we can spray starch it. Um, and just stay stitch any curved edges. Oh, cool, you're making those um, Yanta overalls in the curtain panel. Cute, those are cute. I'm interested in the jumpsuit, the seam work jumpsuit. Is that, um, which one is that? Is that Kimmy? Kimmy? Sky, the Sky jumpsuit. I might make one of those soon. The, the Zadie is really popular, but I have the Sky. Oh, to make them white. Oh, because you want to bleach them. You might not have to soak them for hours. <laughs> Just put in the washing machine. Okay, binding time, my favorite. You know I like binding. All right, I have, I have a couple tutorials on YouTube on how to cut binding and bias and how to sew it together to make it a continuous strip and how to sew it onto things. Um, cutting the binding is one video and sewing it together and sewing it on things is um, another video. So totally recommend it. I feel like they turned out really good and helpful, you know? All right, so this is my right side and this is my right side. Okay, so when you're piecing together binding and you want it to be a nice continuous long strip so you don't have to stop and seam it, all the ends that you're gonna sew together are the same angle. I'm just looking for the right side of my fabric right now. So these are all right side facing up right now. Okay. I'm actually looking for all the pink ends too. Cause I have pink thread on. Okay, so you want to sew. This is not the right angle. Let's do that. OK. 
get rid of that weird funky thing. Okay, so all, all of these are the ends I'm gonna sew to each other. These are all right side up. And um, it does seem kind of counter to how you would do it, but you would, um, <laughs> yay guys. Um, this is how it goes together. Cause if you were to, if you need the visual help, like take this piece, right? I'm gonna sew this to right there and it's gonna go like this. So see, that's how it goes. So you just put your pieces right sides together and you line them up on the seam line, not the cut edge. So you're not gonna line them up point to point. You're gonna line them up seam juncture to seam juncture. I'm gonna do quarter inch seam. I, I don't back tack. Um, you can if you're gonna pull on your bias a lot, but um, the reason I'm not going to here is because this fabric is so lightweight that um, back tacking, it's gonna make it kind of crumple because my machine's got probably a 16 needle in it. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So now I have this, and let's see this end. Oh, so now I have, now I have purple ends. This is right side up, that's the back, yep. So let's try this one. You can always fl flip the, you know, like change the cut. Like I'm gonna do here. So when I'm doing a lot of these, I stack them all, I cut them all, the, make sure they're all the same angle. And then I stack them all up. And then I can just sew them together really easily. Take some practice to get the hang of it, to trust what you're doing is actually accurate too. All right. Oh wait, I just sewed these to each other, not to the piece I already started. <laughs> I just have one more seam. Oh, sorry, I just bonked the, the uh... Let's see, okay, this is the, it's really hard for me to see the right side. That's the right side. And this is the right side. So let's just cut this off like this. So I gotta decide, I think I need to switch to purple thread actually because my hem is on purple. I think it'll be okay. Um, and then I sometimes further do this, trim these little doohickeys. And if you don't know which way it's gonna press, just trim them off like that. If I'm making a lot of bias, I actually um, roll it up too. Oh, there's another piece there. see here this is probably way too much bias for my hem you can kind of fix like see this angle is way more steep than this one but you know, you can make them exactly the same, but um, you can just also kind of correct it on the fly by doing this. Just go juncture to juncture. That one's a little wider. It's not bad, it's hand cut binding. Remember how it was tough, so. <laughs> The Jenny overalls are cute. That linen would be great. I've made the Burnside bibs, they're great. I really modified them. There's a video, but I modified them a lot. Hmm. Sadie, isn't the, or Marsha, isn't the um, Yanta overalls in plus sizing? Yeah, there you go, Christy just said that. All right, I'm just, I'm just winding this all up. Get him. I didn't end up needing to wind a pink bobbin after all. Yay for regular weight thread. Oops. 
Okay. So I have a, a little spindle on the back of my machine. So I'm going to just put this on that spindle. Do you, let me see if I can show you guys. Um, let's see. Do you see this right here? See this I added. This is from like those little yarn ball holders, but the little spool comes on my machine. So I put that on there. <laughs> Not nice, but I have that. <laughs> I'm assuming that's what it's for, right? <laughs> You're into jumpsuits now, no rolls, yeah. The straps, <laughs> right? Oh, I hate that too. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if I, I think I have too much binding, but it's okay. All right, so um, usually when I do binding, it's on the edge of something, and so I start from the inside and go to the outside like I always do for everything. But this is on the inside. So I'm going to start on the outside. Like it finishes on the inside. So, and the way I like to start and finish my binding is by just folding over a little inch like this. Making sure I'm doing it right sides so together. I'm also gonna start on the back side. Maybe I, back side, but probably just behind the seam allowance right here. I don't really care. I, I don't need the juncture. Personally, I don't need the juncture to line up with the seam, uh, the side seam. And uh, it'll be a little easier to handle if I don't add that complication. Basically, that's why I'm doing it that way. So I'm gonna sew it a quarter of inch seam. So like I said, my binding is a little too wide for this. So I don't really wanna pull it. Usually when I attach binding, I pull it so that it naturally wants to um, curve. I'm just gonna pull it like, just make sure that it's definitely flush. That's about it. Oh, look at this pink stretch right along the purple. Oh yeah, this is the front too. Okay, okay. Yeah, I started on the back, but I went to the front. Stay up there. Pushing my side seams to the back. I'm gonna add a bit of a curve here on the front. Sorry, I'm, I'm lifting up and turning at the same time. A little bit noisy. Pressing my binding seam open just so it lays a little flatter, you know. That's the last time I wore overalls too, Megan. And I mean, I love those things. And people were sick of seeing me in them, but they were like, those things look so comfortable. I was like, yep, that's it. <laughs> Make it work, exactly. Plenty of bias. What time is it? Oh, it's only one, okay. I kind of figured this would be a little long. So we have a lot of steps to be out of the pockets. Okay. Here we are back at the beginning. And so you see, remember I have my little folded over spot. Um, I'm going to line up my binding to the this folded edge right here, the edge that's like the raw edge. And then that's where, where I'll cut it. Cut it off. I don't ever sew my ends together. You can if you want, though. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I am making the, or I am wearing the Chickadee sweater by Isolde Teague. You got yarn to make a Brenna. What's a Brenna? Which one's that? I feel like I've seen that one. I haven't knitted for months either. There is starting to be binding available. Um, I sold a ton when I closed chicken boots. I feel like I could have a business just selling binding, <laughs> but it wouldn't, it wouldn't support me. Just cause I would have it made. We, we, we cut ours professionally, like had it professionally cut, I didn't cut it professionally. Yeah, I know Christy. It's like, it's hard. It's, I, I'm now making my own as well because I, I'm not going to send out a bolt to be made into binding. The minimum was, um, it was pretty small. It was like a $70 was the minimum, which ended up being something like three bolts. They didn't all have to be the same bolt either, but we, we sent out a, a lot. We would do 90 yards of one fabric into binding. 75 to 90 yards. One time I did 120 yards of fabric into binding. And that would be per group of fabric. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the yellow one I wear. Oh, yeah, that one. That one actually went um pretty, I know, oh, it's been a long time since I made that. I made that in bamboo. Uh, I'm going to iron this since we're at the end anyway. What's that? There's a... F okay, well, it doesn't show. This is when we need music, because I, I can't sing, you guys. I definitely couldn't sing and do this at the same time either. <laughs> I just need maybe a little puppet show or something. That might scare you guys off though. it along the edge as well. Yeah, well, Lisa, we used a lot um, at my old business, binding, you know, we used a lot. Um, and when it was professionally cut, it went through our binding machine a lot better. Because I have, I have a sewing machine over in the, in the other room I don't use anymore. But it, it's just like my machine now, but it has a binding attachment on it. It wouldn't do this. It has limitations. People are in love with that machine, but it's just the attachment, which was $35. I 
I was always telling people, I'm like, it's $35, it's no big deal. <laughs> but um, it would, it does the edges of things great. And you know, it wouldn't like finish the start stop, like it has to go off the ends. It wouldn't do a circle like this and it wouldn't do it to the end. Like there are attachments that do that, mine did not do that. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's uh, you just send it to a narrow trim vendor and they do all kinds of really cool stuff. This is gonna be a problem right here. I can already tell. I should have been looser right here. Um, I don't know if you've ever watched somewhere on something like Project Runway and they will have like pleating. They'll send out pleading for things and they're very final, final before their big show. That's the kind of vendor I used to send it to. I actually sent it to one that did all, like did a lot of the Project Runway stuff. There's not very many of those around. This is going to be such a big problem. Ooh, I don't like this. So yeah, I used to hand cut and then I just got to a size and then I got the binding machine where I was like, okay, I have to have this professionally cut and it's, it's pretty cheap, um, but it locks you into your fabric being binding. <laughs> There's a vendor for all kinds of stuff like that. It's really cool what they do. They did so many amazing things. Um, you wanted to design things around the things they did. <laughs> Like when you see pleats on a, on a garment or cool trim on something, they would do that for people. They would put the trim on for things, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna run into trouble right here. Color that spot with a Sharpie. <laughs> I have been known to do that on webbing. Black. <laughs> Punch. <laughs> do I always edge stitch binding and every, no. I'm going to this time, but no, not usually. Well, I, I, wait, what do you mean by that? Because like this time I'm going to understitch it right here. I'm gonna understitch it right here. But uh, yeah, binding always needs to be edge stitched for the final thing. Yeah. You like to hear the steam from the iron <laughs> rather than music or a puppet show. <laughs> so yeah, let's edge stitch this because I didn't iron it that great. It is evidenced right there. <laughs> This doesn't show to the outside, but it'll it'll help my um, facing stay to the inside. My binding, not my facing, the binding him. And then um, it will make it a little easier to iron when I get it out of the wash. So I'm just pushing the seam allowance towards the binding. Two more stitches left, including this one. One's gonna give me a lot of trouble. It may look bunched up on my side seams. We'll see, we'll see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna clip this a little bit more. Here, here. Lots of clips. <laughs> I'm committed. I used to use this binding maker in the Bay Area, but he, um, his building sold. He'd been there for 50 years. And uh, his building sold and they weren't going to rent to him. So I lost him as a binding contractor. That was like one of the 12 things that happened to me my last year at Chicken Boots. Um, that, that led to me going, okay, this, I guess this, I'm one of those people that's just going to have to happen. I'm going to have to close. 
Um, that was the very first thing that happened. No, that was the second thing that happened. The first thing was when my uh, factory who was sewing a lot of our really popular, the smaller popular items, more affordable things, they just said, oh, we don't have you on the calendar for spring. What are you talking about? When I was talking to their sewing floor guy and he was like, all right, we're ready for you. And then the main guy was like, I don't know what you're talking about. We don't have you on the calendar. I was like, uh, what? He's like, you have two seasons a year. I'm like, what? <laughs> what are we talking about? Um, that guy didn't know what he was doing, though. He was always kind of a problem for me. Um, the sewing floor guy didn't really know what he was doing, but he was trying, you know, he was, he was, he was there. He was, he was doing it. So, um, that was the first thing that happened. Then I learned my binding guy was going out of business and then my, uh, building sold. <laughs> um, that was all in a week <laughs> right before Stitches West. <laughs> And I was like, okay, right before, right before, meaning like th two and a half months before when I should have been like sewing all of my product for my big shows, my, for Madrona and for Stitches. And so I was like, all right, this is making me feel like there's stuff to come. So, and that's when I didn't sign up for Stitches the next year either. All right, so if you had seven eighths of an inch uh, wide binding, like the pattern instructions suggested, it would be a half inch smaller than mine right now. So mine, I cut one and three eighths, and it's just out of habit, no, no reason. I'm a little worried about this spot right here. This will be the easy one, so I'm going to start on this one. This is my pocket right here, so it's a little thick. And I'm just going to, um, I'm going to turn my garment right side out so I can sew from the inside because it will be a little easier and you'll be able to see it better. Do you guys want the camera closer or anything changed? Um, and then let's see how this is going to look. I might be able to pull it off. You gotta love the purple thread on the pink fabric. It just makes it look so wiggly. <laughs> okay, uh, this is the front, this is the back. I'm gonna start on the back. So my start stops not on the front. This is my pocket, so I know that's the front. So I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna just fold it under, fold it under. like that and then make sure that all of the binding is on to the inside of the garment. Now if you do a contrast binding it's a little easier to see and um, I feel like it's a good idea to make sure you can see a tiny bit of the garment kind of poking out right here to ensure that your binding doesn't show on the other side. So because mine's wider I just fold all the way in there like that. I'm going to try to not pull the garment so I don't get any torquing. I think I could have done this better. The reason they have a binding hem is because this is such a um, steep curve. I'm kind of sitting a little far in to my edge. Sorry guys, not looking good. I feel like I'm rushing it. <laughs> I have a little bit of ripple here, but this shirt looks okay. That's what I'm gonna go by. Especially when you get down to the center, you want to make sure you're right back on track that you don't have any torquing going on. I usually like to pull on my sewing <laughs> to keep it going true, but on something like this, I would get into trouble because there's so much stitching in this hem already that it's not going to want to um, 
be flexible. So pulling would get me into a lot of trouble. It would start torquing, you know, so. For the most part, it wants to just turn under. And lay flat, you know? Like, I, I, I'm not forcing that at all. I'm just kind of letting it do its thing. And then when I get up to this little side seam juncture, but see, do you see, like, I don't know if you guys can see it. Like, I'm sorry, my stitching is, looks really bad because of the contrast um, um, thread. <laughs> <laughs> are we going to stitches midwest i did that show once it was really fun so um like when i pull this now it's okay but when i start when it starts the sewing and i pull it it'll want to torque all right here we get we're getting to my trouble spot here I'm going to have to stretch the binding a little bit. Try and keep it as trying to stretch only the binding and not the outer because it's obviously already kind of tight. Oops, I'm getting it. It's creeping. It's creeping. Oh, I'm taking that out. I'm taking it out. Can you see right here? It was creeping to the front. Oh, that's not, that wasn't so bad. <laughs> you guys see what happened? <laughs> Do I leave it? <laughs> Should I say it's intentional? You guys see what happened, right? The sewing fairy is reminding me that I haven't set up her shrine here. <laughs> the bobbin's pink and the top is purple, Louise. I forgot to change the bobbin. And now I just sewed, sewed in my dress, I see. It already looks challenged because of the purple thread makes it look wiggly. Dang it, exactly. My pocket's making it not want to be flexible there. All right, almost done. Oops. We'll decide how I what we think with the uh, <laughs> with the thread change. I usually like to stitch right on the end, but I haven't corrected it because then it would be a different width. That's why. I'm gonna see what it looks like on the outside. There was just way too much stitching on the purple, of course, you know? All right, 
last touchy spot. So I'm kind of uh, really trying to ease this in right now. It's probably gonna have some tucks on the outside because of the uh, binding right there and that curve. I should have set myself up a little better for that. Yeah, I probably have to take that all out anyway because the the, the tension, you, know, the, you can see I have a different color. <laughs> You don't see from going <laughs> exactly, exactly right, right. Pink, purple. I had plenty of opportunity to notice that too. Ironing it, you know. Let's see, it's done though. Not bad. Got it. Phew. I kind of like the, I have to admit, I kind of like the, the pink. Yeah, Christy, I mean, mine's a, mine's a little, you know, if I could do that whistle thing, shh, shh, that's what I would do. <laughs> Let's iron it. <laughs> Let's iron the heck out of it. <laughs> I still think that's a thread. Thumbs up, you can't find the emoji. <laughs> There's too many.
Just ironing it a little bit. Uh, I think it's just CK, Christy. <laughs> that is one steep curve, indeed. Yeah. I keep thinking these are threads. <laughs> it turned out really good. I like, I mean, like, I'm not complimenting myself. I, I like the, I, I like, I was a little worried about the, you know, um, weight of the fabric and the print, but the print really kind of makes it, it redeems it. <laughs> Are these too much? Let's see. What do you think? Do you think uh, that's too much? They seem kind of big. Oh, thanks guys. Yeah, I'm happy with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I agree, a quilter. Cause it kind of gives you that little like humpback thing, you know, that's kind of why I got rid of some of the shirt tail hem at the bottom. I like the pockets too. I'm glad that, I, that made me nervous. I was like, sat there like, <laughs> that this fabric's cute. It comes in a teal navy blue combo. Um, I think the navy blue is the purple and this is the teal and then a black and white. You know, it, it, they're striking. The, I just thought the white would be too see-through. Oh, there's four. Oh, the fuchsia was sold out, really? What's the fourth one? I'm trying to think, is it, is it yellow and brown or something like that? Or, hmm, is it yellow and brown? Is the fourth one? Hmm. No, it's not silk. It's just cotton lawn. It's by Andover Fabrics. It's just a light, really lightweight fabric. It's not silk. It's not that drapey. Um, I think I like the buttons. I don't really have many others to choose from. This is all I have well, mostly all jean buttons I could do a clear <laughs> yeah I don't I'd have to go to the store and get some So it's not, these are all like onesie twosies. Oh, it's like a golden cream. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I might look and see. Uh, my yarn store honestly has a really great button, a button selection. You don't think that's too much? Especially if I do just maybe four, you know? Cause like you're, I'm not gonna undo these two. It's probably just gonna be those two. They just seem really big. <laughs> Cause these are just too small. 
Let's try them. It's a totally different look. There's a little. What do you think? <laughs> well, I like, I'm, I'm eager to try this on. So I'll take it home with me and um, try it on like proper, you know? Yeah, right, Margaret? Maybe self-covered buttons would be good. You did a black and white print that looks like a crazy. That sounds cool, though. I feel like this um, pattern really, because it's a shirt, it, you can do a lot with it. Like, it, I feel like it's more versatile, you know? I can't wait for my tea house dress fabric to come. So what do you guys want to do, Upton or... Um, Myrna. I think I might do the Myrna actually. Because I know Brooke has the Upton and she's not home yet. And she might not be ready to hit the ground running next week when she gets back. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Self colored, covered, clear. You're not a fan of the flowers, I, is what I'm reading, Marcia. <laughs> They're just kind of big. They match better in person, just so you guys know. They do have a tiny bit more coral than um, the fuchsia, you know? I could also get dark purple, you know? That way they just blend in. But I do feel like there's enough polka dot going on, like with all the little print, that I could actually have some covered. This is when my cord idea doesn't work that great. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, um, so next week, let's see. I'll cut the Myrna. I'm excited about that because it's a seam work pattern. I like seam work. I like their patterns. Yeah, I think with leggings, right? I think you will. I need leggings that aren't athletic. Yeah, I'm gonna check out the yarn shop buttons, Vicky. I think you're right. They have really nice buttons there, and um, um, they're usually unique. And they're actually really good at helping me. You, you do purple? Yeah, I think I normally would too. I mean, this is not a conservative dress though, Lisa. <laughs> Yeah, I think they're a little bit off color too. I don't think I'm sold on them. So that's the what comes out, you know. Oh, I do. I have those clear ones that I could put. Oh, you mean like behind it on the top? I have a, the the little ones. They're a little heavy. They are metal. So maybe maybe that wouldn't be the best choice. They just seem a little lost on there, you know. Yeah. Can we hold it up for you guys? Let's see. The whole dress. Yeah, they don't need to be flowers. Yeah, exactly. They don't need to be flowers. You're right. And I like going there. I like an excuse to go there and look for buttons, you know? And she's always great. She'll be like, she'll just like start pulling things and she'll take over and do it for me half the time. And it's, I just am like, that looks great. Cause sometimes like I have that tendency to be really narrow focused and I'm not very good at like expanding what I think. And I've worked really hard to not be like that, you know? And so, um, oh, that's a good idea, Quilter. I, it does look long enough, but then I tried it on and I was like, that's a lot of leg, but I didn't have side seams at the time. Yeah, so let's, fingers crossed, right? I know, it looks like the length people are, I did not cut it very much shorter 
than the the thing. Like I like I didn't chop, chop much off. You you know it's short because you've only taken two inches off mine. You usually have to shorten things loads. Okay. All right. I'm nervous, but I'm excited about it. I think it turned out really cute, and I'm glad I went with the bold fabric choice. And yeah. I didn't forget to stitch these. Did I? Did I stitch one side, not the other? Oh, no, good. That's so funny. I didn't stitch my pockets on my Thea Rochelle either. I just left it soft. I mean, it's all stitched down, so it's not going to pull out, you know? Yeah, I'm excited. Thanks, guys. So next week, I'm going to be making the... Me making the Myrna. I am in a pink mood, obviously, or pink and purple. Make that. And then. In the Myrna. Well, their, their sketches are so light. <laughs> yeah. So this is pretty cute. This is the inside of the garment, the outside. And there's a long version too. Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> Thanks you guys, yeah. We're gonna have, we're gonna, I'm going to make my family watch the last episode of Big Bang Theory. Oh, I don't know how many yards this is. Because the last one was like Thursday night. And I love that show. It's like one of the only TV shows I watch. Let's see, this um, calls for about four yards of fabric for the short. And that's in the uh, 45 inch wide fabric. So I think this is actually whiter than that. Oh, I think this is a um, uh, uh, art gallery. I like their fabric a lot. So it's 44 inches wide then, I know that. And then um, all, their fa all the art gallery fabrics, um, their baseline is much, um, it's nice. You have this too, Lisa? That's awesome. What'd you make in it? Have you made anything in it yet? I'm curious. Yeah, this is definitely out of my norm, but I feel like it'll look good on me. And it'll be kind of a good transition, like a fall dress too, you know? So, so we'll make the Myrna next. Um, and this is available for curvy sizing and missy sizing. It's got a really great size range. No, it's like a deep uh, plum color. It looks a little flat on the screen. Let's see if I can um, change. Yeah, that's better. It's more like that. Still looks a little wash washed out. Yeah, I, definitely, I think my watermelon's tasting a little better too. <laughs> Sounds good. Fingers crossed there's ice cream cake. That's my favorite, but I'm not gonna get my hopes up. <laughs> I love ice cream cake. I love frozen cake and I like ice cream. I don't like frosting very much, but. Or just ice cream, ice cream's good. Ice cream and ice cream and ice cream. I love ice cream. <laughs> Everything looks pink on here, but this is, that, this is, that looks pretty, it looks a little pink on the screen, but not much. The birds are like a brownish, um, really lovely brownish color, and then white. Oh, it's, this is the wrong side of the fabric. Wait. No, it's not. No, 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 this is the right side of the fabric. Uh, we do have a Cold Stone. They mix the fla the flavors, right? I forgot about Cold Stone. Um, we have a great gelato place here. 
love ice cream my daughter went and got me frozen yogurt the other day and i was actually chatting with friends online or chatting with friends in stream and they were chatting to me and i was like just a second i take it i'm gonna make a frozen yogurt order it was so funny and um she brought it back and all the toppings were separated and it was really cute i was like i want toasted coconut and almonds on top and i want four peanut m ms <laughs> I don't want a whole bunch. I just want four. And she came back with like 10 peanut M&Ms and the coconut and almonds. <laughs> I know, right, Lisa? We're having pizza. I'm not a big pizza person, actually, to be honest. But there is this place in town that makes it really fresh. It's all wood-fired. And their toppings are really good. And they will put like greens on top, which I love greens on top of my pizza. And I never get to go there because... Um, it's not in an area that's convenient and people really like the other one and I don't. So I was like, we're having farm star pizza. <laughs> Cause I knew they would be down for pizza. It would be easy for everybody. And then um, I can get what I want there. So I can get arugula on top. I like arugula and kale and I don't like red sauce. I like weird pizza according to other people. But they, they'll do whatever they want there, you know, and it's wood fired, so that's cool. So, um, I don't know, are, none of you are on Twitch anymore, right? Because I was thinking about rating people. Let's see. And because I want to try that, but if there's no viewers, then it doesn't make sense. <laughs> Drool. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I had a, um, don't tell my mom, but she gave me a full box of C's candy on Mother's Day that she custom picked out all my favorite things in there. I set it on the counter and we suddenly got all this rain, right? And um, there was like four ants and because of the rain, because they have nowhere to go. <laughs> and then there were more than four once I set that box of candy there. So I found like four ants inside my box. So I had to get rid of it. I was kind of relieved because I would have eaten that whole box in a week. Um, but at the same time, I'm still craving it, you know, because I feel like it's still there. And I'm like, oh, I want that. Next time a raid. Okay, yeah, we'll pull, we'll pull you guys over there. It's one of the achievements I need to unlock on there. But it's not like I really need to do that because we're on YouTube. So, <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thanks for spending my birthday with me. This was the best. That way I'm not sitting at home looking like I'm supposed to be looking delighted that it's my birthday or something. <laughs> you guys know what I mean, right? <laughs> um, and um, I'm just going to go hang out, you know, try on my dress. So thanks, you guys. I really appreciate it. Um, and I will see you. I'll probably see you early in the week with me cutting out the Myrna because we're going to do this the whole next week. Um so cutting on uh, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday, and then we'll sew Thursday and Saturday again. So thanks, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> and have a fantastic rest of your weekend. I'll see you guys soon. So take care. Bye.